just like eat more. I think it was spinach, greens, beans, stuff like that. And Lettuce, tomatoes, <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> yeah. That's how that yeah. sound like reminded me. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's how it goes, but I remember that. Yeah. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back into another episode of the Carlos Granados podcast. As always, you can watch this on YouTube in 4K. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can get notifications. So whenever every video goes live, you get a notification. Thank you guys, as always, for the support, the love that uh, I've always received. And don't forget to listen to on Amazon uh, Music, on Spotify, and on Apple Podcasts. We're in all the channels. And today, I have another special guest, Anna. Welcome to my podcast. How you doing, my girl? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank I'm you. Very thank excited. You. Thank you for being here. And before we started the podcast, we were talking about like, yo, you also wanted to start a podcast. And I want to know about your process because a lot of people nowadays, they want to start a podcast, which I think is great. Like, you know, I would love for people when they tell me that they vo like their voices want to be heard or, you know, they want to do something that's like creative or for whatever the reason may be for the podcast. I'm like, this is cool. Do it. You know, why not? Mm -hmm. So what is it that uh, you want to talk about in your podcast, what kind of podcast do you want to talk about or are half or you want to have host? Is it, what is how you want to carry it? Yeah. So I think just like growing up, I've always watched podcasts and I love watching podcasts, just not so serious, like informational stuff, just a lot of like relatable things and just people like having fun and kind of right. like it distracts me, especially like when driving to school or driving wherever. Yeah. Um. So we've been talking about this for a while. Like I did want to start it on my own and just have guests. But then I was talking to my sister about it and we just kind of have like very similar experiences and a lot of stuff that we like lived and everything. So yeah. we were kind of talking about we could just start a podcast and talk about it. Um, and that would just, be cool. Yeah. And it would just be like things about being Hispanic growing up and kind of like a place where there's not many Hispanics. Yeah. Um, And just like growing up in general. Um, yeah. Kind of like a niche. Yeah. Right. Just like things that we went through and like what we experienced and everything like that. And just kind of advice and talking to people that are similar to us and just like people who are not and wanting to know more about yeah. how we grow up. Nice. Mm -hmm. That sounds very entertaining, actually. Mm -hmm. that, that sounds. Is there like any specific podcast now that you listen to, especially on your way to school that you enjoy? Um, there's a couple. They're just kind of random. <laughs> but right, I listen. Ahead. I listen to a lot of like Trisha Paytas just because she's like funny and a lot of the things that she says are kind of random um i listen to the backyard boys they're also very funny but i also listen to like true crime so rotten mango crime junkies w um, yeah a couple of those um crime junkie used to get me through uh my um on my way to school or like when i was interning in school i always used to listen to crime mm -hmm. junkie in the morning yeah, I got to a point, like, I would listen to it a lot, and I would just watch, like, Criminal Minds and everything. There was, like, a, year, oh, a couple dude. years where I would just watch that, and it got to the point where I was, like, listening to it in the bathroom, like, at the gym, <laughs> and then I got kind of paranoid, so I, I had to stop a little bit, because there was, like, I was, like, scared of everyone, so I was, like, I'm not going to listen Is to it, it Isn't much. it not, though, like, if you listen to too much of that, you start getting a little, like, concerned or maybe a little bit scared, like, paranoid, yeah, yeah, you get paranoid, you're like, yeah. yo, it's, like, it's serious out there, like, this mm -hmm. actually happens, and... When you start listening too much, I was like, yo, you get ca caught up very much. Yeah. But I enjoyed going to podcasts when I used to go to school as well, whether it was like sports or anything like that. I used to love listening to podcasts because it will kill an hour. And I'm like, when you're listening to a good podcast and you're on your way to school, work, gym, wherever, I, that's that's yeah. that's a good feeling. You're just mm -hmm. like, mm, we're going to get that out there. This is good. The yeah. drive doesn't feel the same. Yeah. You know and I just I mean? feel like it's more entertaining than listening to music because then I'll like start like zoning out. Right. So if that with that that way I can like focus more. Because your mind starts working on whatever the yeah. podcast is going on. You're like, like thinking about it. You're kinda like making images in your head too. Yeah. Yeah. So you told me that you hadn't thought about names or your podcast. Like what do you think it would be? Like have you had anything that um maybe intrigues you or you haven't given it thought? Maybe your name. Um we were <laughs> since you're doing with your sisters, maybe your sisters. Yeah, well we were thinking about it. We had like a list of names. Um since we do want to be talking about a lot of like Hispanic things and yeah. just like being a Latina and place that we grew up and everything we were thinking and then my name is anna and her name is melanie so it would have been like latina am just because it's like the mm, radio show kind of nice um that was one of them but we have a couple more i just can't remember now. right but yeah we thought about that and yeah now that i'll be on break from school then i'll start like really focusing on that 
Got you. You know, uh, I guess I can give you some like advice and like some tips into into things. When I was making, and I don't know how you feel about this, but when I was making decisions to make like my podcast, right? So I, I started a podcast with another friend back, um, I think at the beginning of the year, and unfortunately it didn't work out. But when we're coming to names, we're trying to figure out what we would talk about, what kind of names. I think the name is important too, you know. But then again, I was just like, hmm, what would I name something? By the way, if you guys are listening to that on on the uh, on the audio or watching the video, my stepdad's using the bleep, leaf blower and he's been doing it for 30 minutes. So <laughs> we had to get the, the podcast started. So just uh, ignore that as much as you can. But when we were coming into names, uh, I thought it was important, you know, to try to figure out what was uh, a good name or a catchy name. But since we had a niche when it came to our health, we we went along something like that. But I feel like if you name it something that would probably like maybe some people will not be interested in you also have to think about that right that's true yeah you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so that's the reason i left my podcast now as my name i'm like people already follow like in my channel is my youtube name i'm gonna leave it at that you know i can talk about anything and everything it kind of opens like the doors for like a bigger uh, spectrum and a bigger audience you can reach with people does that yeah. make sense and it's also a lot of like branding that's just the, correct like, that's what i learned in school but it's yeah. branding yourself and that way people like know you no matter where you are like they're looking looking for your name right correct mm-hmm. exactly and that would be easier yeah but it's cool though it's something you can think about and starting it out and trying it out it's also cool um and if you need any help with like podcasting and like setting everything up just let me know of i course. got you thank you yeah and another thing was just like i don't that's what I was asking you before is like, where do you post there? Like, how do you go about editing Got posting, you. and everything like that? So what I do is um, because it's easier for me uh, right now to record on my phone because I don't have different cameras. Mm-hmm. So what I do is I have a um, my audio right now goes directly to my phone. So I don't have to edit the video and then I edit the audio and then make it, you know, put it together. Yeah, basically. It together. yeah right. Mm-hmm. So it's all in one already. So whenever I have to edit things, it's all in one. Like I don't have to do anything, any extra editing. Mm-hmm. So what I do is I post it to a website called Buzz Sprouts, and you create an account there. And once you create an account, you start linking your account to Spotify, Apple Music, and uh, Apple uh, Podcasts, and then Amazon Music, and whatever all the sites you mm-hmm. want, you can post it. And the cool thing about it is you only have to upload it to that site, and when you release the podcast, it releases oh, it to wow. everything okay. else. That makes it a lot Does easier. That, yeah. Exactly. So because I have the Spotify for podcasters or whatever that is, it's like the app. Right. Because that's I I looked on TikTok for like all my advice <laughs> of how to start it. I was <laughs> yeah, like right. how to start a podcast. Yeah. Um, and that's what they said was like the easiest thing, just like upload it through there. Yeah, you can do that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, I I thought about it and I was like, well, if I want to reach like a big audience, like, and some people don't have Spotify, yeah, and some that's people. True. Some, some people actually have, because they have iPhones, they have Apple Podcast. Mm-hmm. So if they have that, I was like, well, let me reach at least the three top main platforms, which are those mm-hmm. uh, for the most part. So it, it releases it. I don't have to touch anything. The only thing I have to do is edit like the name, the description. Um, but even now, like Buzzsprouts, if you pay like a, a little extra, to, not just for the subscription fee, but also like it has an AI. So it takes mm-hmm. everything we're saying right now. And it turns it into a summary, oh, wow. so you won't have to waste time to write us uh, uh, to write a description mm-hmm. to your channel. Which I makes use it a lot easier. Correct. I use yeah. the same description on um, the Buzzsprout account and then to the YouTube. Wow. Yeah. That's so, amazing. Yeah. Buzzsprout. No, okay. Yeah, Buzzsprout. So I got you. I'll give you all yeah. the all the links and stuff. And then of course I post my videos on YouTube as well, so people mm-hmm. can watch it because a lot of people are more visual. Yeah, that's what I like to watch too. Sometimes, like if I'm in the car, I'll listen to it. But if I yeah. can watch it, I like to see. So my, I had a friend, yeah, I had a friend that does that, and I'm like, well, I have a phone that's basically like one uh, has a great camera. I record in 4K. Why not do that? Mm-hmm. And when you see my clips on like YouTube Shorts or uh, TikTok, you can't really even tell that it's like one camera recording because like if you zoom zoom into me, it looks so good. Yeah, it yeah. does. I think it makes it so much easier now. Like everything, you have it on your phone too. Correct. Which yeah. Is good. That's cool. So, mm-hmm. well, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get more mixy into that. So mm-hmm. I want to transition because uh, you told me that you just got, well, you got into real estate a couple of years ago, if I'm not mistaken, or um, recently? Around a year ago. I okay. started, yeah, I started working on getting my license a year ago, but I recently got my license and started. Okay, got yeah. you. So what made you start into real estate? And this is cool because you're fairly new into, into the whole thing. And maybe talk about some of your struggles that you went through or some of the things that you've seen recently when it comes to like real estate. I know a lot of people are doing that more recently, but I feel like slowed down a lot, right? Like the market and stuff. So because, yeah. because I mean, the only, the reason like even Everest here with me, like 
the reason I'm not buying a house is because it's, it's, it's so, so expensive, expensive man. <laughs> yeah, and the interest is. rate is like crazy. It so. is very expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I started about a year ago because I'm still in school. So I was I I've always wanted to do something with real estate, and my dad has his own construction company and stuff. So he's always oh. like working on houses and everything so i kind of was always thinking if i do real estate like i can help him out too and like get him more customers more clients right um and then i started <laughs> i started watching selling sunset on netflix and it kind of like pushed me more and Wait, i think what is that it's a you don't selling sunset no is that like where they build houses and stuff uh, no the model <laughs> it's more like a reality show for <laughs> real estate <laughs> okay, i've never heard of that well <laughs> it's more like a reality show now it's more like drama but back then when it first started it was a lot of like real estate and like how they would sell it in i think it's beverly hills or hollywood or something okay so it's like how expensive those houses are and they'd be like selling for like five million dollars and they would talk about their commission and Damn. like yeah and so i was like that seemed like a really good way to get money <laughs> what would be a five million dollar commission on a, for a a real turn Honestly, is that three percent? Uh, in Georgia, it's three percent. I don't know how it is in California. So let's say three percent five is what is it a hundred and fifty thousand or something like that? Is that more? So, <laughs> I, I don't know yeah. if the math ain't mathing, but that's a lot of money. That's what I'm saying. And that's just one house. That's dang, bro. Yeah. But to get up there for you to sell those houses must be also harder though. Like, well, I mean, yeah, for me it was, but for them it seems so easy because they're some of them are like actresses and just like. They got their real estate license and they got into it. So it was a lot easier for them, especially like working with clients because they're the people that work with like A-list celebrities. So they'll like sell oh. to like Beyonce and all of them. So that's why they make a lot of money. But I saw that and that was kind of more of like a push too. And I think during the time when I started, it was I think around January last year. Um, and I was on break because my school does like a month and a half break for Christmas. So okay. we'll get out in November, be out for Thanksgiving, be out for Christmas and then go back in January. So during yeah. that time, I kind of had like nothing else to do. So I was like, okay, I'll start. Um, so I did it online and that was a little bit hard just because I'm not very much like, I'm more of like in-person learner, Gotcha. but I think after COVID, I just kind of got used to it and I was like, I'd rather do that. So I did it all online. Um, it depends on who you are, but it usually takes like two to three months to finish it. And it took me like, Mm -hmm. I think like five months to finish it. So you have to do, it's like a course, you do the whole course online and you're kind of, usually they teach you, but I had to teach myself because it was online. Um, so, yeah, I did that. And then once you finish the course, you have to pass the course exam. And they only give you two tries. So you have to pay for both tries. Um, and that's kind of on your computer. So that one was a little mm. bit hard. That one was hard just because I, like I said, I had to teach myself. Um, so the first time I took the course exam, I didn't pass that one. So I kind of got like a little. Dis- you started questioning yeah, yourself I was a little like, bit. Yeah, it's a lot harder yeah. than I thought. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like the stuff that they teach you is not really like how you actually sell real estate. It's more like scenarios and like laws and stuff you have to know not to go to jail i guess <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of well, what hopefully they say. hopefully they teach you something along those lines <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so i took it the first time and didn't pass and then i waited i think like two weeks and i studied more and i took it again and that second time i passed it so mm. after i passed that i was like okay <laughs> that was the hard part and then i had to study for the state exam and i didn't realize how hard the state exam was going to be but i i had heard like a lot of real estate people were talking about like it takes them sometimes like three four five maybe like one time it was like 14 times to pass the exam. Damn. Yeah. And the good thing is you can take it as many times as you want as long as you have the money. Gotcha. But it can get expensive. So I took it I took it the first time. I kind of didn't know what to expect, so I didn't pass the first time. Right. Um, and then I had, I scheduled the second one, but I didn't realize, I think I had gone on, on a trip or something, so I didn't have time to study, and I was trying to cancel it. <laughs> they didn't let me cancel it, so I had to like pay for it, and I just went to take it, whatever, and I knew I was going to pass that one. Yeah. And then by the third time, I was kind of like, Okay, if I don't pass this one, I don't know if I'm going to keep going. Right. And I think for that one, I literally studied like two days before. And honestly, I just prayed. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I pray I pass. And God, if I come don't, through. Yeah, I was like, if he, if he wants it to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, so I passed the third time. And I like whenever you pass, whenever you don't pass, they give you a paper that says like the questions, not even the questions you got wrong, just like the topics that you got wrong. Mm-hmm. That way you know what to study. And then it's just like one paper. But the time I passed, they handed me two papers and it was a blue paper. And I was like, okay, now I pass. And I was like, I, like it was just like so... A relief. A relief, yeah. Because right. I was like, finally, I don't have to deal with that part. So I thought the hard part was over. So I passed that. And then I think after that, I went on a trip for like two months. And I came back and I was like, okay, when I come back, I'm going to like really get into it. Right. So then it ha- you have to do a whole process to be able to get your license. You have to like get your criminal background check. You have to get... There's like a lot of paperwork you have to get. And you have to find a brokerage that you want to work at. So I was like looking for one... Um, Luckily, I think some of them were calling me. So they were like, you can come interview. Like, basically, when you get your license, they want you to interview them 
so that you can see if you want to work for that company. Got you. It's, so they're kind of like, selling themselves a little bit. Yeah, pretty much. Gotcha. Yeah. So I ended up choosing the brokerage that I did and then they were really nice and they like helped me through everything. Um, so I gave them my license and then I started, I think that was August. August is when I like started doing it. And then they have like some classes that you have to take. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of classes you have to take to be able to do real estate. Like once you're, you have your license. So gotcha. that are required. Um, so are I these started doing classes that. recurring. Like, do you have to take them like every year? Do you know? Um, yeah, there's some that you have to take. You have to accumulate a certain amount of credit hours. Okay. Gotcha. And that like happens, I think every four years. Okay. So you take different classes for that. Um, so I started taking a program and they were kind of helping me there. Right. But I think during that time I was like, I was on my own. So I was like trying to figure it out. And I knew my parents knew some people that wanted to like sell or buy or whatever. Um, so I had gone to talk to them and they wanted to go see a house, but I didn't, I didn't even know how to like show a house. So I went. <laughs> <laughs> I went and I was where's like, TikTok? Hold on, where's <laughs> TikTok? I was like, how to show a house. Um, so I went and I had like a bunch of papers printed out and I like showed the lady and she liked it and everything, but she didn't tell me that they had already had an agent. So uh, I was like, I just wasted my time. And I was like, I don't think I could like, I can't do it on my own, but I feel like it'd be better for me to have someone to be able to ask these questions to and everything. Right. So that's, that's when I joined a team like in my brokerage. So mm -hmm. I'm on a team for them and, and it's made it a lot easier. It's just like a team leader and she's really nice. Um, and then like another agent. So we both kind of just use her and like ask her questions and anything that we like are questioning, we, we can yeah. go to her and she's helped us a lot. Um, but since I am in school, I'm not like doing it full time. So I gotcha. haven't been able to really like put all my effort into it. Right. But as of right now, I have, I think, two buyers and I'm working on a seller. So oh, so you're yeah, you're in the mix right now. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. So hopefully by the end of the year, I'll have like a transaction and then. I'll be able to put more time in it whenever I'm on break for school. And even when I graduate. That'd so. be cool. Cause even, you know, even if you were to have your podcast, eventually you can talk to, to people about your whole process and journey like yeah. you're doing now and give them all these tips and advice of, you know, the process. Yeah, definitely. Cause I feel like a lot of people don't like, I didn't know what I was going into when I Can went into it. Yeah. And this is the reason why I also have yeah. my podcast. Cause we don't know mm -hmm. what to expect. So that's like, I feel like a journey that people need to know what it's like. Because, look, man, some some people sometimes when it comes to careers, they make, you know, we all think it's going to be a straight line, but it's a lot of zigzagging to get to there. You know what I mean? Like, the end point and the end goal, it's always the same, but getting there, it's always different for everybody, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, what was, what do you feel was the hardest part of, like, all this process so far? Like, do you feel like it was your, um, the testing that you had to take? I think not even the testing, because I think at least for the testing, like, you know what you have to study. You have the books, you have, like, gotcha. the resources. I had everything. I think it was, like, once I had my license, actually, like, going into it. Like, as a real estate agent, you know you're supposed to talk to people, but I didn't realize, like, how much you're supposed to talk to people. They have a lot of different, like, platforms and mm. events and things you have to go to and, like, network and how you get to get your clients and everything. Like, I didn't realize all that because... Like I said, I watched it on Selling Sunset. They don't, show, they don't show any of that. No, they make it look <laughs> so, it's so time easy. time consuming. Very time consuming. Gotcha. You have to like, you definitely have to be a people person because you have to talk to everyone. Yeah. Like cold calling, door knocking, um, messaging people, writing them letters. Like, there's a lot that goes into it, and that's just like being able to get clients. So once you actually get a client, it's a whole different thing because then you have to like go look at houses, look at prices, like talk to them about yeah. contracts hustling that's <laughs> called lot. real hustle yeah and then like also just trying to do it while i'm like in school still yeah and just having all like all these other hobbies that i do like it was just a lot of balancing everything and gotcha. i'm still like working on it right now that's good but yeah. I, it's a learning process yeah. though, right? you know what i mean so you were telling me that you were studying too so what is that you're trying to get into and um what are you studying where are you going so i go to savannah college of art and design in atlanta and I, I always see that college. Yeah. Man, 85. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a nice college. And I think <laughs> I think that's also why I got into it. Like, I, I think at 18, whenever I graduated, because it was during COVID, I like I had always liked fashion and everything about it. And I thought yeah. I wanted to go to like New York and be a designer and all that because I I don't know. I just get into like shows and it really helps me like create a personality that I want to be. And I think at the time, like I had been watching a lot of like fashion shows. But even when I was younger, like I would love to design and like dress up and all that stuff. Mm. So I was like, I want to do something with fashion, but I don't know what it is. I also like business a lot. So I was like looking for schools. And then because of COVID, like we didn't have any, like we were supposed to have a class where we were supposed to talk about um, what colleges we wanted to go to, how to apply to them, like all your options and everything. But because of COVID, we didn't have that. Yeah. So it was kind of like I, we were in quarantine and they were like, okay, we'll decide on what college you want to go to. And I was like, well, the only college I had gone to go see was SCAD. And I think I went to Georgia State too. 
but I didn't really. Hey, what's up? Hey, nah, nah, <laughs> hey, hey. I didn't really don't, like, don't say nothing about no, GSU I like, now. I, what's <laughs> <laughs> I like Georgia State, and I actually applied and I got in. But I think nice. Yeah, what got me from SCAD was just how creative it was, and I like being creative. And I don't, I don't know. Gotcha. The, like if you ever go into the building, like everything is all different colors, different oh. like sculptures. Like I've never been in there. Really, really nice. And they just actually made a new dorm building, and it has like two movie theaters and a like pool and three gyms, and it's. Hold up. Really nice. No, I'm, I got a question if I went to the wrong university, bro. Hold <laughs> no, it's really nice. And I think that's also why I chose that school. So I ended up going for fashion marketing and yeah. manage. Actually, no, I went in as fashion design, like okay. designing and all that. Gotcha. And then I think I took my first like design class and it was a lot of drawing and painting and coloring. And I just don't like that. Like after that, I was like, I don't think I want to do fashion design. So I changed my major to fashion marketing and management. And then I still wanted to do business so i'm minoring with the business and entrepreneurship uh minor you know uh, the hearing you speak and going through all this process because you know you're f like basically new into getting into your career and what you want to do in life and you're trying different routes right mm -hmm. what you should it, a lot of people don't talk about enough about the whole process and the the journey the struggle um some of the things that you went through and hurdles you know you had to go over to get to that point, I think that's really important to share and talk about. And listening to you is very refreshing. Kind of reminds me when we were in college, like, you know, I I originally wanted to be in mathematics. And then I was like, took a couple of math classes. I was like, no, nah, maybe that's not my cup mm -hmm. of tea. Then I went into uh, managerial sciences, but then I couldn't pass like, some, some of the classes in managerial sciences. And I was like, dang, I thought I wanted to be a manager. And then um, I looked into other uh, majors, but I eventually ended up landing in like economics. So I started somewhere, but it life and classes and experiences just like, no, I'll lead this and this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This route. Yeah, I feel like yeah. definitely a lot of people don't talk about it. Because even now, like, I'm about to graduate SCAD and, like, I'm, I have real estate and everything. But I also, like, started thinking, like, maybe I wanted to go to a different college. Maybe I wanted to study something different. Like, I personally, for me, I like trying different things and I don't really like sticking to one thing. Gotcha. So now I was, like, also considering maybe getting my, my master's in something else just so I have that. Yeah on there too but it's yeah it definitely is a lot of like trial and error like seeing the things that you like seeing the things that you yeah. don't like because otherwise you won't know <laughs> you won't know right yeah no and to be honest even even that is important but one thing i would say even along the ways if you can get any experience on the fields you're trying to get into that that's important because mm -hmm. then you kind of you know heighten that in your resume you know what i mean they don't mm -hmm. have to know exactly what you that's did true, but yeah. you make it sound more more professional yeah you know definitely what I mean? yeah yeah so um, I think that's important. I appreciate you sharing that. That's a it's a cool journey, man. That's a yeah. cool um, everything that you're going through. Uh, any advice that you would give uh, anybody when it comes to real estate, maybe even what you're studying now at school or something that you feel like you would like to share that they need to know or they should know. So whenever they want to study uh, your your degree or they want to get into real estate, anything you'd like to share towards them that you felt like was like something that helped you or you should have done um whenever you were learning um i think just really like being able to try different things and like doing your research because whenever i like mm. started with anything i kind of I'm, I'm the type of person like if i want to do something i don't even think about it i just kind of like go into it right so like i've done so many things i went i did i played the guitar for a while i did like <laughs> swimming lessons i've done lashes like i've done so many things so i feel like just being able to try so many things and like deciding on what you like and what you don't will help you be able to make those choices of like what college you want to do, what career you want to do. Um, and there's also like nothing wrong with if you don't like it, you don't have to do anything with Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. Sometimes people feel like, oh, I spent so much money on it, so much time. Like now I have to do it. And be unhappy for the rest yeah. of their lives. And that's something I don't want to do. That's why like yeah. even now I keep trying. Like I know I'm not old, but also I'm not young. But I feel like just keep trying things and mm -hmm. then that way you don't like live with regret, I guess. No, that's good. That's important. But that's yeah. a, that's also another important point people sometimes because they felt like they spent so much time doing something or so much money you know and unfortunately for them either they're not happy or maybe they failed they want to they feel like they have to stay in that certain path and then that makes them miserable for even longer instead right. of changing and trying to make it happen mm -hmm. so that that's a good point actually to, to, to think about for you guys to to really just you know listen to mm -hmm. um appreciate you sharing that so you told me that you're a vegetarian. I am a vegetarian. And we're going to change it up right now because Thanksgiving is around the corner. And it this is. episode is going to release. I don't know when it's going to release, to be honest, but close to Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. 
And I want to hear this, especially you coming from a Latin and Mexican household, right? Yes. <laughs> so first of all, why did you become a vegetarian? Like, what was the reasons behind it? And then we're going to get into how you deal with it while you are uh, going through Thanksgiving and maybe some of the foods that delicious foods like tacos, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Those tacos yeah. al pastor. It was hard. <laughs> <sighs> Hold on. I got I to gotta embrace myself. <laughs> first, but. So what was the reason you got into, into being a, be- a vegetarian? So I started being vegetarian, I think, around eight years ago. So it's been eight years. Dang. So was, it's, it's almost a decade you've been into Yeah, this. which is crazy because I started in high school and I actually like the reason why I started wasn't even like I, I know a lot of people become vegetarian because like they want to fight for animal rights or something like that. Mine was just really just I, we never grew up like eating like beef or pork or anything like that. Like they did make like tamales and like pozole mm. and menudo and all, all that mm. stuff. But I just didn't really like it. Like kind of the only thing I would eat was like chicken. Um, <laughs> I sound like that girl that was on TikTok, the girl who only ate chicken. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that yet. Would you, you yeah, seen, I don't seen know it. what I'm talking about. The chicken. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I would just like, eat chicken and like ham and stuff like that. Like I didn't really eat any of the other types of meat. So I, at first I was kind of like, OK, let me just like stop eating that type of meat slowly. And I would just eat chicken completely. Right. Um, and then after a while, I had been like watching videos of like how it helps you with your health and everything. Like just mm. having that like different type of diet that doesn't have meat in it it helps you with like a lot of your immune system and all this other stuff right um so i kind of stopped eating chicken and i before i did it actually i went on a a liquid diet so for like oh that's so tough yeah i think it was like two weeks i would just do liquid diet just so i can like get everything yeah out of my immune system and so cleansing cleansing but yeah and then i just stopped eating meat and i mean yeah at first it was hard because my mom does make really good food and she would be like, just eat a little bit. It won't, it won't matter. It's fine. But it, I was like, no, like, it's not, it's not like a cheat thing where I'm just not going to eat or I'm going to eat meat one day and not yeah. eat meat another. So for, I think the first four years, I didn't eat any meat, any fish, anything. And then after the four years, I started eating like fish and seafood and everything because my, I think it was, I got like low iron deficiency, Okay. which I guess, I mean, it's because of my diet and everything, but they were just like eat more. I think it was spinach, greens, beans, stuff like that. And Lettuce, it'll... tomatoes, <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's yeah. how I remind me. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's how it goes, but I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they told me to eat more of that, and it'll help me with that. And, I mean, honestly, what I've seen from my health is I don't really, like, get sick. Like, like the flu, the colds, and everything like that. I, I used to get sick more often, yeah. but after I stopped eating meat, like, I don't really get sick as often. And when I do, mm. it'll be like... Maybe like three days and it'll be it'll be bad, but it's like maybe once a year. But it's, your body recovers yeah, so much faster. So much faster, yeah. Um, so I noticed that a lot with like changing my diet. It's just yeah. not getting sick as much. Um, and then as far as like what I eat, so at first it was bad. <laughs> at first I didn't really know what to eat because I know you're supposed to eat like salads and um, just like a lot of green. Tofu. Yeah, tofu. <laughs> And I was like, I don't really like any of that. So I would eat like a lot of stuff that was kind of bad for me. So I'd eat a lot of like pastas, fries, like, yeah, because I just didn't really know like what alternatives there were. So I would eat a lot of like stuff like that. And it was like not good for my health because I didn't (laughs) gain weight. But after like a while, especially like with social media and being able to see like different recipes and people making food like that, like I knew that there was other options. So that's when I started eating like a lot of um, alternatives. So there's like soy meat, um, chickpeas. Yeah there's tofu you know i actually like tofu tofu is good yeah i like tofu i mean i don't eat it you know preferably i like chicken but (laughs) i like i'll i'll eat tofu yeah no tofu especially if you like season it right and everything like the one at chipotle they do the sofritas and that's tofu and it's i think i've eaten that before yeah yeah that or at most i don't remember but either one Mm -hmm. it's really good and then my mom she also started like making me more food like um with those alternatives and she would make like tacos de soya and those are really good like you can't even taste the difference uh, so uh, no, just okay. Well, she can yo, taste the difference. Mara, so her sister's <laughs> she can here. Taste the difference. Her, her sister's here. <laughs> hey, what do you feel about that? Can you taste the difference between actual like protein, like chicken and beef, and and what is it? Soy. 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 She yeah, can, <laughs> but she, eat, she eats a lot of meat, so she knows. <laughs> but now you're used to it, is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, no, but also like my mom now, she doesn't really eat meat either. Like she eats a lot of the food that I eat oh. because she likes it better. Like, even if you go, I know it's not as healthy, but, like, Burger King has an Impossible Burger. Or, like, Burger 21 also have Impossible Burgers that's made of, like, plant. 
plant based meat. You know what I like? Um, the be the the bean burger. What is that called? Black bean burger. Oh, that's fire! It's, it's so good. good. Yeah. I love that. And I learned how to make that one too, so I love making that one. Wait, actually, what's up? I actually, we're gonna make us some. <laughs> yeah. We pull so, up, pull up to the crib. <laughs> Literally, I actually in my in high school when I first started doing it, my high school never had any like vegetarian options or anything, and I was in a yeah, no, high school. yeah, definitely they don't really care about us, yeah. especially down here. But um, they had a competition for my cooking class where it was like you had to create a new plate that if they liked it, and if enough people like voted for it then they would start serving it and so in my group like oh. they're like well what should we make what should we make and i was like let's do the black bean burger and that's what we made and we actually won wow yeah. that's dope so they started serving it for a little while i don't think they do it anymore but during my time in high school they did serve it for a little bit look at you making a difference in, in the health of americans <laughs> i know in the school system <laughs> that, no that's good i love black bean burgers it's yeah. so good i got into it and i mean I, again i'll eat vegetarian stuff every now and then just because obviously for my health mm -hmm. Um, cause I suffer from a lot of like gastro, like acid reflux and stuff. And I'm like, why not give it a try every now and then just keep, you know, stay a little bit healthy. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So how do you deal with like when, for example, Thanksgiving is coming up and now you're going to see all this delicious food. You got the turkeys for one of my favorite. What is that? The, the hunt, the baked honey ham or something like mm -hmm. that. Oh, that's my go-to by <laughs> the way. Like that. I love that. Like, or tacos al pastor, because mm -hmm. you're Mexican, you know, those tacos be hitting different. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Like, do you at, I'm so, at first it was so hard, like seeing all that and like smelling it even. I was exactly. just like, oh my God, like it. just a little piece maybe. But no, I think now I've just gotten used to it. And like for Thanksgiving, they have a lot of sides. So I just kind of like, Eat the sides. yeah, all the sides. The so mac and cheese. Mac and cheese, mashed potatoes, green oh, beans. And even then, like for a year, I did like the, it was like vegetarian ham. And you kind of just like roast it the same. I mean, obviously it doesn't taste Wait, the same. Vegetarian ham, what is it that made out of? Is that it's like, like plant-based. Dang. I didn't know they had that. They have vegetarian ham, turkey, um, bacon. The bacon's really good. It looks plastic, but, but it's really good. Probably tastes like what? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really it good. Probably tastes like it. Wait, so what's the difference between a vegetarian and a vegan? So vegans don't consume or use any animal products. So that includes like milk, eggs, anything. But you do yeah. milk and eggs. Yeah. And e vegans also don't use like any animal products in their like makeup, hair, shampoo, lotion, anything that has animal products. Oh, they just don't got do. you. So they go to Lush. Yeah, basically. Like your boy. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, vegetarians, we can eat whatever. But now I do eat fish and like seafood. Whatever more. but chicken. Chicken, beef pork so like the main meats like the main sources of like protein mm -hmm. it's what yeah but i still avoid. eat like eggs okay and milk and all that okay yeah it's not the craziest thing too yeah oh how about that I'm, i might need to look into more <laughs> yeah so I you don't... eat crab legs so, so so ever i don't know if you can hear him but he asked if you eat crab legs yeah i eat crab legs i love crab legs i like crab legs, I love crab legs. <laughs> yeah i love seafood now that i can eat it i love seafood that's the way to my heart Seafood? Crab legs? No, 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 no. Oh, crab legs. <laughs> has to be specifically crab yeah, legs. Yeah, well, because, well, so there's, like, you know the little crab legs? Not those. We're talking about the Alaskan king crab legs, <laughs> like the thick, big, juicy ones that are like a foot long. That is good. what I, oh my goodness, man. I don't know if I've ever tried it. <laughs> that is delicious. You sound very passionate. <laughs> I'm very passionate because it's expensive and I don't eat it often. And when That's I do, true. I tear it up. It's really good. No, I, 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 love, I love it. You know what I'm saying, Ever? You feel what I'm saying? Oh yeah, no, it's it's finger it's, looking good. Finger looking good. <laughs> it's delicious. I love that. Mm -hmm. They have that. What is that? A juicy crab. They have a. I don't boy. Seafood you boil. The seafood boil. Man, that mm -hmm. hit different, man. I need to be doing that more often. To be honest, man. Do we need to bangs. be going. Yeah, no mukbang. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's gonna be that'll be tough to be honest. But that's delicious, man. So. Is that like, so the hardest part was just basically not eating the, the but now you're used to it at this yeah, point. Yeah, I think now I'm used to it and I don't really crave it anymore. Really? So yeah. you, your body doesn't give you. No. And I'm, do I don't you, think do I'll Do you be... dream about it sometimes? No. <laughs> like you don't have any nightmares maybe? No. <laughs> <laughs> from getting away from like, you know. The chicken? Yeah. No. I think, I'm, I don't think I'll be vegetarian forever. I think well, That's maybe. what I was going to ask you, like yeah. longevity. Like, do you think you're going to keep it this way? Probably not. Like, I think. I mean, I, I'm coming up on like 10 years. So maybe after 10 years, I'll change. I don't know. But that's another thing that I'm scared of. Like if I change that, my um, like my system will be how used your, to it. How your body will yeah, react to so it. Yeah, so I'm a little scared of that. But Wow. Yeah. Got you. Maybe. I drink um, a lot of almond milk instead of mm -hmm. like regular milk as much as mm -hmm. I can. Uh, I try to stay as healthy as possible. I mean, naturally because of my health. But I, I enjoy natural things. Like, pff, I mean... The almond milk, I think, is one of the big changes. I was actually making almond milk at one point, like really? myself. Yeah. It wasn't as good, though. How so do you make I, it? 
so let me think about the process again. But you put the um, the almonds in water and leave them there for about like 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And then you throw that water away and then you blend it in the blender, obviously. The almonds or the water? The almond. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, the almond. Okay. And you put a little bit of water on it and you blend it. And then once that, once you blend it in, in, in you know, that little bit of water, then you uh, pass it through this like filter. What is that called where you, so what is that called? Um, cheese cloth. Like a cheese cloth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can just get the water, not not the actual almonds. Okay. You it's, get me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can add um, dates to it so you can give it a taste. Uh, you can add cinnamon too if mm -hmm. you want, which I like the dates and cinnamon. My cousin makes a really, really good almond milk and i love it every time i go to her house delicious like i really really enjoy it so i stopped making it for a while because it, it was time consuming plus you have to leave it for like 24 hours mm -hmm. by the way this recipe i saw it on youtube so that's how they were making it homemade but it's delicious like i enjoyed it but sometimes like when i eat if i were to eat cereal for example like i want actual whole milk yeah it's not that it doesn't hit the same in almond milk or oat milk it just doesn't mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah i'll make my smoothies with like almond milk and stuff yeah, we drink a lot of almond milk, but I think here, like, there is, at least here in Georgia, there's not as many options as if, like, you were to go to, like, California or New York City, where there's, like, a lot of vegetarian. More options? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. But even here, like, there's still a little bit more options, but, like, when I went to Mexico, there, <laughs> there was nothing. And, like, if you tell anybody in Mexico that you're a vegetarian or vegan, they'd look at you like you're crazy. That's true, though. Yeah. That's facts, no printer. Yeah, because I would tell, like, even, like, my family members, they're like, so what do you eat? Like, if you can't eat me what do you eat because i guess yeah. over there i mean it's common for them to eat me with everything right um so i'd be like no i just eat like alternatives and whatever and they're like <laughs> they're like so if you don't <laughs> eat meat no she's, she's they said they said people who don't eat me are just a little bit dumber <laughs> than most people and i was like wait I don't know. who said that <laughs> my aunt <laughs> no she <laughs> hey, she was de she was definitely <laughs> offended probably but I, it, I mean it is not common for a lot of people to like turn away food and be like oh no i don't eat that right but and they kind of got used to it. Now Now that I go, they have, like, options for me because it's just, like, sides. They know what's up. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, when, I went, when I went to uh, Philly, my friend was doing a vegan diet for a while. And we went to eat vegan chili fish, uh, chili cheesesteaks. Chili? Philly cheesesteaks. <laughs> and it was all right. It wasn't bad. You know what? Yeah. I gave them props. I was like, you know what? This isn't too bad. It's not. It's not. I was in Philadelphia. So, you know, I was. But I was like, I got you. I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. And it was actually pretty good. It was not that bad. You just have to get used to it, I think, yeah. at one point. You know what I mean? That's true. And I think, th I mean, there are a lot of options. So even, like, when I go to restaurants, like, sometimes I feel bad because my friends want to go somewhere where there's, like, meat or something. And they're like, oh, what are you going to eat? But I feel like there's a lot of options that you don't even think about. Like, I'll just be like, oh, I'll get this without the meat in it. Yeah. Is your is your house, like, what, what do you guys go to? Because uh, I know Hispanics mix it up from, like, regular what's traditional for Thanksgiving. What is it that you, something that you keep traditionally, like, like an American household would? And Thanksgiving, and what is it that something that you don't like? What's something that you mix up? Like tamales, do you make tamales for Thanksgiving, or what do you guys do? We used to. I feel like now we keep it more traditional, just because it's easier. Like yes. we we'll make the traditional like mac and cheese, mashed potatoes. <laughs> I'm gonna keep listing them. Um, and Tomatoes. then <laughs> I'm like thinking of the song again. <laughs> um, but I think uh, no. something that's different that I don't know if a lot of people do, or it's just my mom. But like I know for people, they put stuffing in the turkey which is i think well, that's fire the bread I don't yeah know that, i know we're talking about the salary or something like that wait no the stuffing <laughs> regular stuffing stuff yeah but we never we've never put that in our turkey like my mom makes stuffing different so she has um bacon ham salchicha chorizo so now i'm wondering why we haven't gotten the invitation <laughs> no it's really good can A lot we of pull up this thanksgiving <laughs> and say what's up to the family hey really? ever you down <laughs> yeah no, my mom makes a lot for everyone. <laughs> what time do you guys usually celebrate Thanksgiving? Oh, my God. It's so late. Like, people usually eat so early for Thanksgiving. It'll be, like, by 2 or 3, they're done. But we don't eat until, like, 7 or 8. I was uh, So, I was talking to a friend. Um, uh, he, he's white. He came to the podcast. He's actually the podcast that's releasing this Tuesday. You know, we were talking about Thanksgiving, right? Mm. And we were, I was mentioning how they do it around, like, 1 or 2. Mm -hmm. And then they have... I think it's more sometimes because they have the rest of the day to eat seconds and thirds and, you know, enjoy the food. Mm us we have to wait until seven eight and i'm like bro get it over with homie do it at five or something at least like yeah get, get think, used to the program or something i think it's also because it takes forever to cook all the food like yeah. i don't know my mom starts the night before but it does take her until like three for the turkey to be done so i don't know how they make all their food so fast all right well <clears throat> we got the invitation so just make sure <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna pull up 
Uh, Ever, what is it that I'm missing on the topic list? Because we knew we were going to talk about something else. Oh, right. Oh, my God. Good. Gosh. Yeah. So, <laughs> good. That's another topic. All right. So, I appreciate you sharing all the family. But we're going to pull up. <laughs> Y'all are invited. Nah, bad. Bad, 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 bad. We need, to, we need to come through and say what's up. Please do. We have a lot of food for everyone. Huh? We have a lot of food for everyone. And actually, we don't even eat that much. We make so much and we don't eat We don't eat a, a lot. Hey, if not, we'll get the seconds and the thirds. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know we'll be there. Like swimwear. Uh, so, this is another interesting topic. You have... A total, well, you guys are a total of what five sisters. Mm -hmm. So, how was that experience growing up, growing up with five sisters? So, you are the second to last, yes, right? So, mm -hmm. you have three older sisters, yeah, three older and one younger. Got you. So, mm -hmm. how was the process of growing up with five sisters? Do you feel like was it tough? Um, because I'm sure you have a different perspective and different point of view when it comes to you know being five and then you're the second, second mm -hmm. youngest. So Did you get more privileges, less? <laughs> I did, you, I did you feel like others got better treatment than you did? Or you got the better treatment? Were you uh, spoiled more? Be know. honest now. Your sister's here, you know. I think I know. she might. You, you got to let something out because then, you know. No, there's, I mean, there's a lot of, like, pros and cons to having only sisters. Like, I feel, for me, it's so common, like, the four sisters. It's just five girls. But I guess for a lot of people, they're like, that's a lot. Like, five girls in one house. It's a six, lot. Six girls in one house and then, like, my dad. So, so was your dad doing any of the work? Because the <laughs> 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 well, they were trying for a boy, so that's why we got five girls. I mean, he can keep trying, no? Um, <laughs> I don't think so. Not anymore. Wait, what would happen if you actually had like for a miracle, you guys ended up with a like a little brother? That'd be crazy. <laughs> That'd be wild. How you feel about that? She's back there. She's like, she was. Oh, you were boy. supposed to be the boy. Are you a tomboy? <laughs> Not. Nah, she's like the opposite. Are you the princess? Yeah, the, the youngest, <laughs> youngest ones always get the yeah. most of the love. Yeah, talking about getting spoiled, I think she was the one that got the most spoiled. Yeah. Um, she was like, well, we met, we didn't accomplish our yeah. mission, so might as well. Might as well now, you know? she's the last one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I think growing up with all sisters, I mean, we did fight a lot. <laughs> There was a lot of fighting and like sharing clothes and just like fighting. But I feel like that's very common with any sibling. Gotcha. Just like with girls, it's more like catty and like... <laughs> We'd like chase each other and like pull each other's hair and stuff. But the way you actually guys got into fight fights, like just like pulling hair, oh, and, like okay, scratching, gotcha. maybe. Okay, <laughs> maybe a couple black eyes. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. something like that. Gotcha. Um, but no, other than that, I feel like I feel like we we talk to each other more. It's like easier to talk to each other because we all have the same like issues and we all relate to each other and like we give advice to each other because we've kind of like been <clears> through it and everything. So I'm gonna I'm put you on the spot. You ready? Oh <laughs> Who's your favorite sister? Oh, gosh. <laughs> no, I can't choose. That, no, I can't choose. No? I can't choose. No. But, yes. Okay, wait, wait. You don't have to say it, but do you have one? A favorite sister? Mm -hmm. Oh, she does. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> no. She does. <laughs> I had to think about it. No, I don't think so. I feel like just because. Look at me. No, just the, because. The, <laughs> just because now, like, back then I didn't have a favorite sister. And I don't have a favorite sister now. But I think just because me and my younger sister are always, like, at home together. We yeah. spend more time together. So, We just it's naturally yeah, a better relationship. Get yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't have a bad relationship with any of them. Just we get along better. Um Who's the meanest? Hmm? <laughs> Who's the meanest? Mm. 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 I don't know if I am gonna say names. <laughs> but I but think you like, do have wait, one in mind. Yeah, we all know. But she's not mean in the sense that she's like mean to us. She's just she has a tougher attitude. Are you guys thinking of the same one? <laughs> We're all thinking of the same one. Ah, so it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she has, she she means well. Yeah. She means very She's well, yeah. She means well. <laughs> she means well, yeah. <laughs> who's the sweetest? Sweetest? Or who has the best personality? I mean, I don't want to say me, but... <laughs> yeah, you're... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, maybe. Yeah. No, I don't think I have the best personality. I just think I'm, like... I don't know. I'm very helpful to everyone. Like, gotcha. I don't know. I always like helping. You're social. Yeah, I'm very social. And yeah. like, I don't know. I think I'm the one that always plans things like trips and like dinners and everything. I'm always the one that has to like put everything together and get people there. Yeah. What do you, you need to share some of that with Mara because we have to do all of that on our end. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> <what> <laughs> yeah, that's what I have to do at home, especially like with my parents, because if it's not like not that if it's not for me, like they won't go anywhere. But like for trips and stuff, like if I don't plan them, they don't really like to go out as much so i have to be the one that plans everything and gets everything together yeah did you feel like you get it did you, do you feel like how, how does your dad handle that having five 
um, you know, girls and like I'm, I mean, obviously like guys will be, you know, trying to holler at you guys. How how did how's your dad? How does he react to that? Is he is <laughs> he a, is he is he a uh, what is that a, a girl dad? Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah, but he he's had to have a lot of patience. Yeah, a lot of patience with all of us. I can imagine. Yeah, um, no, I feel like he's gotten used to it now. I think, yeah, he probably wanted a boy because I mean, most. Yeah, most parents want a boy, but I think with all of us, like he's definitely spoiled all of us and like treated us all the same. So he's kind of like I feel like he's what I look for in other men. Men, yeah. So it was a good example. So it's he, yeah, very high standard. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's good. That's Mm -hmm. actually good to hear because you have a good example at home that Mm -hmm. you you know kind of see the qualities. Wow. They they really going at it. if you guys can or cannot hear my dogs are going at it right now for some reason but it don't matter let's keep going mm-hmm. um well man that's a um, that, I wonder how he feels that would be I don't know how I react to having I mean I think it's cool you know what I mean but mm-hmm. I mean again, he definitely is very overprotective too like with who we go out with and everything and I feel like when a lot of people see my dad like they think he's like very like not mean just like very tough got it but really and like my mom looks like the sweet one and she is sweet but. Once you get to know them, it's like the opposite. Like my dad's like always like joking around and very like he's just easygoing and my mom's more like strict and everything. Mm. At least with us. I don't know. Yeah. That's how we see it. I don't know. Ever, how would you feel if you had all girls? That'd be tough, huh? <laughs> I'll be over yeah, you yeah. definitely have to be, yeah. <laughs> Dang, you'd be girls. that dad. <laughs> Man, see, I don't know how I react. That's so interesting. I think you'll go with the flow. But also you also don't want to be too strict, you know, because yeah. then you're gonna Shut them down. Do you feel like your parents did a good job in that? Where like you guys a good balance? I think with me, yeah. Yeah. I think with the, the Mar- <laughs> I think with like the other the ones, the older ones, they were definitely a lot more strict because I mean it was like their first kids. But I think by the time they got to me, they didn't really not that they didn't care. They just didn't they weren't as strict. Like I was allowed to go to sleepovers yeah. and like go out of town and like go on trips with my friends and everything. And like they were not. <laughs> they were not allowed to sleep over. Oh, for real? Yeah, they oh. were not allowed to sleep over, or, like go out as much. But uh, it's it's it like you know, my first test, second test, third test. What did we do wrong? What can we mm-hmm. do better? Din, 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 din. And by the last one, they don't even care. They just, yeah, let her go just whatever, whatever you they want. Just let her so go the other one, the last one is the one that gets all the benefits. Yeah, yeah that's how usually how it goes. Man, yeah. that's cool. Um, is there a that that five girls holding this one? Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Is there? <laughs> I'm still thinking about those a lot. <laughs> Uh, is there anything else that you would like to share with us or you have any questions for me uh, that you asked ask me? Anything about you know, my podcast or whatever? Um, well, I know that you, you said your channel is about like your health and everything. Yeah. I don't know as much about your health because I don't really know. Got you. So would you like mind explaining? I, yeah. I, so how deep are we getting into this uh, conversation? I'll give you an overview of what happened. Mm-hmm. So I started suffering with gastro issues uh, when I was like 21. But at that point, they weren't too bad. Two years later, though, I started having um, really bad acid reflux issue. Have you ever had acid reflux? I actually have that, yeah. You have that? Yeah, I have that. Nah. Yeah, I got tested really? and I have, um, what is it called? Ectobacteria? Oh, H. H. pylori? H. pylori? Yes. You have H. pylori? Yes, I have that. No. Yeah. Hold, all right. This podcast ain't <laughs> ending right now. I'll tell you that. Hold on. We're not, for real? Yeah, I, ha- I got tested for that. And actually, like, uh, I think it was like two months ago, they told me I was positive for that. And did they, you have medication? I did. However, <laughs> they're pills and I can't swallow pills. Mm. And I know they told me I had to be on it for like seven days. And I tried yeah. I tried to take it for the first two days, but it was just like I can't swallow pills. So okay, so listen. Stuff. So I have uh, trouble swallowing two mm-hmm. uh, pills. So <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> just want just to clarify. Yeah, for you for <laughs> <laughs> pills. Um, I, it's really uh, a hard time swallowing. And because I have dysphagia, I don't know if you heard of like uh, dysphagia is basically when you have problem with your muscles, like swallowing stuff. Mm-hmm. But what I do is I broke them down. You never try to break them down? Oh, yeah. I crushed them. Or sometimes I would just chew them. And you wouldn't pass them? No. I mean, I would, but it was just so bitter and it was like I couldn't get oh, past man. the taste. I mean, if I were you, I would look into try to finding ways to see how you can take those pills. Because if you do have H. pylori, like you also don't want that to get because H. pylori can end up to leading like inflammation to like gastritis and stuff or sometimes ulcers. Mm-hmm. So you want to be careful with that, too, because then you don't want to have more stomach problems because of it. But I was just giving you a, a little bit of a heads up. Mm-hmm. But I had I got tested for H. pylori, too, when I was uh, I think it's like 22 or something like that. And I took two week two courses of 
I think two weeks of medication. I got tested again and, and it wasn't positive. I actually recently had a bad experience because they tested me for H. pylori again. So they gave me this tool, uh, stool kit, right? Mm. And obviously I had to get, I had to poop into this little, what is it called, a bu- bucket or something. Bucket? Like a little plastic thing. Like so instead of, yeah, a container. Mm. So instead of landing in, into, you know, your toilet, it lands on that. Okay. So then you had to scoop it up like ice cream and <laughs> Put it into <laughs> like ice cream, <laughs> and put it into this little um, tube, like uh-huh. testing tube, and take it to to lab corps, right? Well, I, I had to do that twice because the first time apparently it came unfrozen because the courier or whatever took so long to get it get it to them, mm-hmm. and it unfroze. I did it again, and they had a problems with it again. I was like, I told my doctor, I was like, homie, I'm not doing this t- three times. Like, yeah. it's not pleasant, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I'm a team player, but I'm scooping like. <laughs> my shit you know <laughs> three yeah. times it's like what <laughs> three times too much yeah too much yeah. you know i was like I, i'm okay well you know whatever but uh, the first time I, I got tested for i got tested positive uh for a but anyways going back to to my ad so you you say you do have acid reflux so you feel like yes, acid sometimes right yeah no it, it used to be really bad to the point where like i would eat something that was i don't even eat spicy but something <clears> that was like mildly spicy or like kind of greasy and then it would like I, my chest would close up and then i would start like wheezing basically oh that's scary it was bad yeah and then i would just kind of like drink water or go to sleep until it like went away yeah but i haven't really treated that which i probably should you should you should look into that so yeah. take, like the, the the basics is you you have an nles right i don't know if you heard of how deep you've gotten into it so you have a something called a lower esophageal sphincter which is your les which connects it's it's the barrier it's the the opening of where your esophagus and your stomach connects right Mm -hmm. so when that weakens for any reason then it it allows um acid reflux and acid to come into your your esophagus which can burn your lining of your esophagus because your esophagus doesn't have any protection from acid your stomach does your Mm -hmm. stomach creates what a new barrier a new lining like every eight hours or something like that Mm -hmm. not your esophagus right so it can lead to more health problems you know bears esophagus which is like going into cancer or whatever anyways so with me my les was very weak because i had a hernia i had a hiatal hernia so that led me to having um a heart surgery but it was not an open heart it was like a catheter ablation because they thought that my heart was um shooting like extra electrical pathways because your heart shoots electricity Mm -hmm. to beat right to Mm -hmm. make a beat so that wasn't the case it turned out my heart was healthy and everything was good but i did have problems with my gastro i used to so whenever i ate my my food will come back to my esophagus and that's called regurgitation Mm -hmm. which is very unpleasant because if you think acid is messing you imagine like physical content coming back Yeah. yeah your chest tightens up you feel all this pressure like you know especially your esophagus is so close to your heart like centimeters away apart so whenever all that's being messed with, like your heart feels it and it starts giving you like murmurs or like, yeah. you know, like any, it just, your heart raises and whatnot. So I had surgery for that. Unfortunately that failed and I had to get uh, that reversed and I ended up having something called a Lynx implant, which is like a bracelet around that muscle that I was telling you, mm-hmm. the LES, so it can support it. And that didn't function to its full potential. So I'm still trying to figure out ways to like heal my issues or whatnot. Oh, wow. So my channel is based on my experiences with like procedures, surgeries, maybe some tips or advices that, you know, um, that I can give people. And that, that's what it was. And the reason why like it's taking so long for me, my channel to grow is because, first of all, I'm not like a public speaker. So my mm-hmm. speaking is not the greatest. And some people want perfection. I'm, right. I'm going to tell you something about that in, in a little bit. But and. Um, also because it's just a niche, like I'm, you know, I'm talking about just health issues and self health issues, not entertaining. Like if you're not going through it, it's kind of boring and yeah. I don't blame them. So a lot of people that listen to it, it's probably a lot of people that are going through those issues as well. But let me tell you something about YouTube. So whenever you have like a YouTube channel or like any kind, like whatever, mm-hmm. I had people give me shit about my, um, uh, um, <laughs> uh, they were like, dude, this was a hard listen. And I was like, <laughs> Well, sorry, I'm not a professional. Like, I'm trying to give you, like, the yeah. most experience you can. But people, like, in the internet, internet is mean, man. You got to be careful. I got so, so much crap from people in the internet when I started my channel. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I started getting better. And another thing that I had to be careful with is that some people thought that I was giving them, like, medical advice. And they mm-hmm. were like, yo, don't tell people what to do. Like, mm-hmm. don't. This is wrong. I had a different experience. They feel so passionate about, like, a certain freaking experience. I'm like, homie, 
if you see my channel, you know that I'm talking about my experience. But now every time I have to put like disclaimer, like, hey guys, this is not medical advice. Mm -hmm. This is me sharing my experience. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you go seek a professional if you have anything going on because this is not this is not a, a medical advice. I'm not trying to tell you to do something. Yeah. Like you take my experience, take your experience, take the doctor's recommendations, advice, advice and then put that together and see what works best for you. Mm -hmm. But that's something that you learn with the process of like YouTube and things like that. And I've gotten better at it. And even talking, I've gotten better because I've, I've, I like to learn. I like to listen, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's not perfect, you know? Yeah. I think with my school, like a lot of what we do is like presenting because we're learning how to market and everything. So yeah. they have classes where we're not allowed to say, um, or like, or any of that. And I think like was a big one for me. Like, <laughs> yeah, I say, like, even I say now, that a lot like, I'm now. Sure you yeah. Hear it. Um, yeah. So I had to learn how to say not, not say like or anything. I think that's also why I've gotten better at speaking, but also just having to talk to people and yeah. like really stay in school and stuff. I think I've gotten better at speaking, but, um, as far as like your medical advice and everything, like you explain a lot more than the doctor ever explained to me about oh, yeah. everything that I tested for. Cause I, I went and they tested me for it and I didn't even know what I was doing. Cause they gave me, it was like a clear, not a clear bag. It was a gray bag. Mm -hmm. And they're like, drink this. <laughs> I didn't even know what I was drinking. Barium. I don't, they didn't tell me what it was. I just said, drink this. Wait, did it, did it was it a machine. No, it was like a gray bag. Yeah, but but you swallowed it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, were they scanning you or something? Mm -mm. Yeah. So they just told you to drink so it. Yeah, they took me back, took my blood, told me to drink the gray thing in in the bag, and then I'll blow in a bag. Oh yeah, no, that was just so. Okay, got you. I got you. Got yeah, you. but they didn't explain anything, so I didn't even know what I was doing. Yeah, it's basically so they can. Um, I think that's the way you blow into a bag afterwards. Yeah. So they were doing the breath test. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Um, and then it came back positive, and they're just like, you're positive, and here's the medication. And yeah. I was like, okay, but I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know how I got it. I don't know anything. Yeah. So they didn't really explain anything. So I think it's very cool that you, like, make a lot of content about that. Yeah. So because if, a lot of people don't know. You know, it's funny. I, and I always tell people that suffer from certain Im similar, similar issues, especially you, you that, like, watch YouTubes and mm -hmm. for whatever reason. People like you, if you were to get worse, and God willing, you don't, like, you, you know, you heal from your issues you will end up in my channel. Like, you will end up watching my videos because yeah. I literally make videos on H. pylori, the, the the breath test and the stool test because I've mm -hmm. gone through both. The one I was doing recently was a stool test, but the mm -hmm. one you did was a breath test. Typically, the stool test is more accurate, but if you have it through your breath test, that means you definitely have, like, the H. pylori. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, look out after that and, and, see, and see what they say because eventually they'll probably end up having you do an endoscopy um put you to sleep doing that things like that yeah it's oh it, they get into it they get more in <laughs> yeah. deep into it by the way if the medication that you take if you were to take it again um just make sure that you replenish yourself with uh probiotics mm -hmm. because what you're taking is antibiotics because it's a bacteria so you're killing bacteria but with antibiotics some people don't know that antibiotics kill good bacteria too because you have good bacteria in your in your uh gut your mm -hmm. gut flora you know it's like positive bacteria and negative bacteria what H. pylori is a negative one. Mm -hmm. But when you use antibiotics, it kills all of them. Like, not just the good, not just the bad yeah. ones, also the good ones. So you have to replenish yourself eventually after with uh, positive bacteria, good um, gut flora, so you can have, you know, a good um, system, um, mm -hmm. gut system. Because that also helps with your immune system, your so, gut. So is there, like, a reason why people get that, or is it just... Um, to be honest, I'm not sure if there's, uh, I've never done my research on if there isn't a specific reason why I said why they get it. But I mean, think of all the things that you've eaten for so many years, right? Like I'm 30 years old. Like imagine all the things, how much food my body has had to process in 30 years. Mm -hmm. Like it, your, your gastrointestines, your stomach, your esophagus, that's like the biggest organ in your body. And it has to work basically every day. So um, I don't know the reason why, but I just know it's like important to try to understand like the importance of keeping it clean or at least taking care of your issues that you have now early so they mm -hmm. want to get bigger. I'm not sure exactly why it happens though, but it could be many different reasons. Who knows? I'm going to do that research and then maybe mm -hmm. even talk about it in my YouTube video. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that people don't really talk about. Like, I don't know how common this is, but I was born with three lungs. So what? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Three. Three. Lungs. Hold on. How is that possible? Oh yeah, I don't. I don't know. How I possible. never heard of that. Yeah, I don't, that's what I'm saying. I don't know how common it is because I know that, like if I look it up, I think there's like one thing that comes up, and it's like a person who was born with three lungs, and he's an ath like a track 
athlete now, which I mean it makes sense. I mean, <laughs> wait, hold up. So three lungs. So wait, don't don't skip over the part where what did the doctor say? What was the? Well, no, I, I mean I don't know because it was like whenever I was born, like before I was born, they told my mom everything was fine. You know, they did ultrasounds, everything was fine. And I think once I was born, like I was born, and you know how you breathe normally, like you're breathing, yeah. right? Well, I was born and I was like panting, I guess. Like I was got you over, yeah, yeah, basically, right. yeah. Um, so they were like, we're going to need to like remove a lung because if not, she's going to like not be able to live. Um, so, so they removed it. Yeah. I have like the scar and everything right here. What? Yeah. So Do you they, really? Yeah. Can I see it afterwards? Yeah. <laughs> not right, right now. now. <laughs> but after, yeah. Not right. Now? <laughs> I, wait. So, so they removed the lung. It, were they, the, do you know if they were the same size? The lungs? Yeah. yeah there were three normal. I mean, it's like the normal lungs, like <laughs> <laughs> the normal as well. Like, <laughs> I only know two of them. <laughs> yeah. But like. If, if as a baby like you have your two lungs but they're all the same like they're both the same size so i was just have three yeah so well, i was like <laughs> so they did so so i'm trying to look at the anatomy <laughs> where they position like what which one they did remove the one that was on the right the left the middle i would ask those questions well, now now like i'm wondering like if they have any because i i don't know if they threw out the lung they gave it to somebody else who was like born without one like oh. i that's what i was like wanting to like research organ now. donation yeah because i didn't know anything as when i was born because i think i went home was it like a month a month and i was just at home like panting all the time so my mom like she never wanted to like leave my side because obviously like i i looked like yeah. i was like having trouble breathing um so i was like that for a month and then after a month because they said i was too small to take it out when i was born so we had to wait a month and then after that they took it out and i was fine but i, I have the scar now so but your lungs now are the, the normal yeah, size everything's normal that you're normal like it yeah. grew into normal lungs mm -hmm. all that good stuff i'm normal, huh? I'm normal now <laughs> but no but i'm just making yeah. sure like it that, that <laughs> so you never had trouble breathing mm -mm. why wow no. that is so cool you yeah. were born with three lungs three lungs yeah man that's why I was like, I don't know how common that is. No, I don't. I think you're the first person I've heard, and I've listened yeah. to a lot of people with health issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is not something I've ever heard of. Yeah. You need to come on my. Do you need to do this a <laughs> lung show? Or you I go know. go do your research, come back into the podcast, and let's talk and about your, all my paper, your third yeah. lung. Okay. I will. I'm gonna the try TL is what yeah. we call it. <laughs> the third lung. The, yeah, the TL. Yeah. yeah. Wow, man, that's crazy. I'm still like stunned. That's um. That's impressive. Yeah. I mean, I don't, if I would have kept it, I don't think I would have lived long, but I feel like anyone who has three lungs obviously can like do a lot more. Like, I feel like I'd probably like be able to breathe run. on. Yeah. You yeah, breathe underwater. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe breathe underwater. Be a fi an actual fish. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe you should have kept it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would have been here. <laughs> you know, maybe you should have seen what's up, you know? Yeah. The outcome of being great. That would yeah. be uh, interesting. Yeah. I don't know how many people have lived with three lungs. You see, if you, you had a podcast and you talk about that, that I would be, I would be intrigued. I'd be like, hold up, what? <laughs> three lungs. Yeah. Three lungs. <laughs> nah, that's cool. Hey, thank you for sharing. Huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Extra lung? Anna three lungs. Anna three lungs. <laughs> <laughs> so ever said ATL, ATL. Anna three, three lungs. lungs. <laughs> that sounds like a rapper name. <laughs> Yo, we were rapping about wait, third hold on. What? Are, what? Are, <laughs> wait, why? Did, why is that not her podcast name now? ATL. Welcome everybody to Anna Three Lungs. <laughs> ATL shouting. <laughs> Appreciate you repping the A for the Annas, repping the T for the three, and repping the L <laughs> for the lungs. Gang. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we'll leave the podcast because this is good. Hey, thank you, my girl. Of thank course. you for coming. And you for if you me. ever want to come back, you know you're always free to. This was a great conversation. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I feel like I, I learned a lot from you. And hopefully you guys out there, you know, hopefully you guys enjoyed the podcast. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, to keep subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to turn on the notifications. So whenever I go live on my YouTube channel or whenever I post a video, you will not miss it and you'll get that noty. Uh, also, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the um, Spotify, to the Amazon Music, and also to the Apple Podcast. And every week you should expect a new um, guest and really interesting stories. Anna, again, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Anything you want to share before you leave? Um, no, just thank you for having me. I learned a lot and I was had a great time here. Awesome. I'm glad you were here. I'm glad yes. you were good. We're going to get uh, your other sisters on the podcast. Because yes. um, <laughs> some of them are shy. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're good. We, yeah. We, uh, we, we need to have you here more often. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys. Uh, see you guys on the next, the next episode next week. Take care, guys. Deuce. <laughs> you gotta pound it.
Yes. And I was, good job. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. That was that was fun. <laughs>